What's happening guys, Sharon here with Rise Magic and today is the follow-up video to our last video which was how we like to film our videos. So today we're following it up with how we like to edit our videos. Now, I've answered a lot of comments about this before but we use Premiere Pro. I think it's important for me to say straight off the bat though that I am not an expert with Premiere Pro and because of that, I'm not gonna teach you how to use that software. Rather, I'm gonna give you more general tips on how to use any editing software to make your videos look better, whether that be Windows Movie Maker, iMovie, one of those apps in your cell phone, or even Premiere Pro. This way, this video can be much more accessible to all of you out there, and you can use these tips and tricks to just make your edits better overall. So believe it or not, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about how I'm gonna start my Car Shear Magic edit is the soundtrack. Actually, in reverse order, for me, it actually normally works as I hear an awesome song, just you know, listen to music and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to make a video with that song in the background. But other than that, the music is so important because you can use it to convey a vibe, not to sound too hipster, but you know what I'm saying, a feel to the video. You can use the beat drops and the rhythm to edit to the rhythm and the beat so that it matches up with the events taking place in the video. And when that all ties together nicely, I think it makes a really awesome end product and people love the music in the background. People are always asking in the comments what the music is. So most of the time I use Eden. Eden is one of my favorite artists. And uh, what's convenient about Eden is that almost all of his music is copyright free. So I can use it on YouTube and still monetize the videos. And even if that weren't true, I'd probably still use it because I love the way that music sounds. But either way, whatever music you like, whatever music you think fits the mood of your video, go with that. And then once you hop that song into the computer, we can start editing to the beat and to the rhythm of it, which I think is the most fun thing about editing. All right, so let's hop into my Premiere Pro file for the video that we made a few weeks ago about how your cards don't matter. A lot of you guys had questions about how I edit this, so I hope this answers a few of your questions. So like I talked about, this is how my timeline looks like. Without getting into too many details, the nested sequences are basically organizational things. So if I click inside of this one, you'll see these are basically all my clips that made up that video. Okay? Title sequence and everything. Now before we get started, just to clarify a lot of questions, these little, um, I don't know what to call them, like tessellation type things floating around the video, they're actually uh, just a download off of YouTube on a package of videos. And right, what I did is I took those and made their opacity down to like 30% so that they're transparent and you can see all the action through it. I just thought it made like a cool effect to have in the background of the video. So here's our title sequence. See little dissolves and all that stuff. Now we start off with the arm spread, okay? And all I did here was slow down it while it was in the air. Not too fancy. Here's another uncut flourish. You can see that in the video. In fact, I'll just let it play. Thumb spin. Unboxing the fake car she touch cards. Now, this shot right here, we actually took by getting a ripstick or waveboard and riding around in a circle around the flourish while filming it. Um, what's important here is that we use an effect called Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro to stabilize it so it wasn't shaking so much. Because let me tell you, that original ripstick footage, it was shaky. Now here's the first example of what I'm talking about when you change angles mid-flourish. So we start off with phase right here by Dealer's Grid. We hit play, you'll see this angle, and right as it's about to start again, we switch angles to a more macro shot. It extends the flourish, and here once again, we switch, and you rewind that, we switch when I'm starting backdrop. So this is why I talked about having multiple angles while filming. Because from here, that's not the best angle to show backdrop, but if we go a few frames, that's when I switch. During the continuation of motion with my right hand. So my right hand moves, this angle switch, and we get a nice slow motion shot of backdrop. 
Moving on, here's some Toy Story Uno cards, the famous Toy Story Uno cards. Here's another uncut flourish by Grant. So, so you don't want to do that changing angles all the time because it could be the illusion that you can't do a full flourish without any cuts. But I think it's definitely something awesome to show in flourishes where there's an awkward regrip. Here's what I was talking about, Huntington by Dealer's Group. Great flourish, but I can't do it like um, Tobias. So during that regrip that's coming right about now, angle switch helps the flow of the flourish continue. Here's the other cards being unboxed. Once again, angle switch. There's just some fancy editing. And now, here's what I want to talk about with music. So this is a nested sequence. These are all my clips. So if we back out, now we have the music playing in the background. So let's go find that spot again. When you have the song and you have the beat drop that you want to build around, focus on that first. So when I was constructing this video, I knew that I wanted Grant to hit torque or some sort of aerial on that beat drop. So I built the whole video around putting in torque first on this beat drop, right? And that way, everything else is synced up as well. So we had the first beat drop of the video. And right then, that's when all the tessellations come in on both sides. And I won't go over how to do that basically, but all I did was basically split the tessellation opacity video and path and put one on each side so it matched up while that video happened. Some more aerials here. What I'm gonna do is get back into this nested sequence where we are right now. As you can see, this clip right here, that's the shot of the aerial, right? And what above it is these tessellations. So if I were to go into these tessellations, you'd see the two of them rotating, right? And that's what you're seeing on top of this video with transparency. So moving on, here's a riffle fan. Now here's what I want to show you. I'm going to turn this up so you can hear it. Um, in the case of this, this is how a video sounds like with no music and why I think music is so important. Just listen real quick. Thrilling, to say the least. Music is so important to having the video turn out well. So we'll continue to go through the rest of the video. Here's another shot that we got with getting on the ripstick and riding in a circle around the flourish. I think it ended up looking pretty cool. That's not necessarily an editing trick, that's more of a filming trick, but we're tossing it in here anyway, because the important thing is this video taken around the camera was unusable, it was shaking all over the place. But with Premiere Pro, there's an effect called Warp Stabilizer. You pop it on there and it's nice and smooth. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna teach Premiere Pro because there are so many good tutorials out there for Premiere Pro with people who are cinematographers, who are editors professionally. So I don't feel right teaching you guys that stuff. I'm just showing you what we did in this video. So we put Warp Stabilizer on this clip, coming around, Grant ends it with an aerial. Here comes the pressure fan of the Toy Story Uno cards. Just simple stuff here, guys. Just switching up flourishes. The sick two finger salute. More squoze action. The Paul spread. So, see, with the montage, you're really just switching up clips. The main thing I wanted to point out is that if you notice, there's no extra frill on the beginning and end of each clip. So, let's say you're starting out off a flourish, like let's say the side will cut, right? You don't need to include in your video you getting into Z-Grip. It's a waste of time and waste of space. And not to get too corny, but to use that art analogy, a video isn't finished when nothing else can be added. It's finished when nothing else can be taken away. So there's no extra frill. You don't see Grant setting up for the low pulse spread. Bam, right into the low pulse spread. You don't need to waste that time. Here's another shot of Grant doing, I believe it's centipede. Could be wrong on that. I don't really know Grant's flourishes too well. So here's another thing, um, see the one hand shuffle coming up here. If we're talking about angles, really try and think, like I mentioned in the filming video, you want to get multiple angles so you can switch angles in the middle of the effect, or you just want to find the best angle. Now for the one hand shuffle, what would be the coolest? Head on so you can see that weaving happen. So just keep in mind what's going to be the coolest angle for this flourish. 
and slow mode deck flip is kind of bad. Here's Bullet, and once again, when I talk about in the filming video, you want B-roll, which is that subsequent footage. And when you're editing, you want to pop in that subsequent footage every once in a while. Like you saw that salute I did, that was kind of corny, but you're throwing it in there so the video isn't just a compilation of flourishes, it's you. It's your work, it's your product. You're not just showcasing your hands, you're showcasing your personality and everything that goes along with it. So I'd encourage you to sprinkle your video like we did here with pieces of B-roll, showing your personality, and showing that you're more than just a card flourisher or a magician. That's just my two cents, but yeah. All right, so we're almost on the video. Here's Grant hitting the worm. Absolute classic. Like I said, once again, the best angle to showcase the flourish coming through. And as you saw, I put those tessellations on top of this cross dissolve right here, popping off like that. Yeah, and that's how the original video looks like on the top left here. So all that isn't my editing. All that fake fanciness that you see right here is really just me taking a YouTube video that was free rights and putting it on top of my video as a transparency. So that's pretty much it. That's how I made this video. I know you guys had a lot of questions on how I did the graphics and stuff. The graphics are pretty simple. Just me bootlegging stuff a little bit. Besides that, I hope you learned something that you can use in any editor, which is how to switch angles at the right time to make your flourishes look smoother and cleaner, how to switch angles just to make it look more professional overall, how to integrate yourself and your personality into your video with your B-roll, and to finish off with a really nice song, I'm telling you. I promise you, the song makes the video. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that little sneak peek or dive in into how we edit our videos. I hope you can take that information and use it to make your edits more fire and awesome. As always, I reply to every comment down below. And if you made a sick video that you want me to see, just send it to me on Instagram or Facebook, or wherever you want. I want to see what you guys come up with. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. And I've been trying to dig my way out of the ocean And punch a hole in the sky And float the